Hello everyone, welcome to Star Wars Discussions. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Dan. Dan and I both on camera this week. Yay! Uh, we are gonna talk about the fourth episode of Star Wars Rebels. Um, so these are 22 minute episodes. Uh, we the, These shows are very likely not to be as long as a lot of our other shows. Obviously our first Star Wars Discussions was very long because it was three episodes and the pilot's pretty dense. Um, now, I always do this. I'll say it's not going to be as long, and then it'll clock at, like, an hour, and then everybody will be like, God, Captain Logan, stop wasting time saying that. <laughs> but I just want to... The reason I'm saying that is because right out the gate, I don't feel like I have as much to talk about as I usually do with a discussion show, and I feel weird about that. Usually I have a lot of things I want to I want I tackle. And this one, I'm like... Uh, it's good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I like, like, I like, like. It's just, it's very straightforward, right? I mean, like, like, uh, oh, like, yeah, like the message of it's really straightforward. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, there's, there's not, there's not a lot of really complex. Uh, there's not even stuff for every character to do. I mean, it, 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 this is, this is a uh, Ezra Zeb story, and that's about it. And you have kind of, kind of a little fun moment um, with uh, the spray paint girl at the end. And that's about it. Um, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get uh, right into it. Um, I can see the potential, and I'm not having a problem with this yet, but I can see the potential for people to start saying, uh, uh, this show feels like Disney's Star Wars. <laughs> you know, uh, that, 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 like, that like there is some kind of like Disney movie feel in this all of the sudden that I wasn't getting as much with with the with the first couple. This one, like just with with the with the kind of the messaginess of it and uh, like the way it ended and stuff, I got a real Disney vibe off of this. Well, that's fair. Um, I think the thing that I really liked about this episode was that for me it kind of felt like. I was watching a uh, kind of like a one shot or like like a singular story in an ongoing series of one of the Star Wars Dark Horse ongoing series where it's like a one off kind of small intimate story between two characters going on an adventure yeah. and I like that and I like that we're getting something Star Wars that's able to do something like that like don't get me wrong this is still action and character driven in the same way that we liked um, the first three episodes but it's a little, it's a little bit smaller. It's much more thinly plotted. Yeah. Um, but I, but I like the, the character dynamic between the two characters. I, I still like some of the action things in here. Once we get in the best moment and stuff, I'll talk. And the action was one of my favorite things about oh, this episode. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, like, like the f the first five minutes or so, um, I was kind of. Um, I kind of thought the setup was kind of dull, you know, at first. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, so um, this is about as you're trying to get fruit? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then Zeb stole a TIE Fighter, and I went, all right, here we go. We got some stuff yeah. now, you know? Um, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Zeb has to steal a TIE Fighter, or this episode is boring, right? Like, Agreed. if we yes. hadn't gotten that, this is boring boring and it also it would be harder to um like you have to have that big action set piece in order to drive the point home for Ezra that uh there are um reasons to save people besides you might get something out of it and obviously that's the that's the big thing that this that this episode is about i think that they both kind of learn that a little bit um, and, and, I mean, I, yeah. and, and then, and then at the end, you know, he, they, they, they really pay that off by having him, uh, uh, really put on his line, his, his life on the line for, um, some old friends of his family that, um, almost get taken by the Empire, which, by the way, um, suddenly a little darker right in the middle there, uh, and I, and I, and I kind of appreciate, like, the more I'm thinking about it, like, I keep, I keep saying it's got this Disney vibe, but then, like, they blow up this guy's house... And throw his whole family in stockades, and uh, like like uh, like they're they're gonna go imprison them, and uh, yeah, I mean like like we really are getting to see like the darkness of the empire, so um, that's good. Yeah, I agreed, and I I I really liked um, the kind of parallels between Ezra and Zeb in this, in that um, they're kind of the two adventurous childlike characters in, in this in this show and they kind of make a point of saying that like my yeah. favorite line is one of my favorite lines this isn't the one i ended up writing down but um i like when kanan and uh, hera are sitting on the ship and uh kanan's like oh it's a lot more peaceful around here without the kids off, not on board and yeah i didn't really think about i didn't think of that like either the kids but yeah. that's totally kind of what it's what he's like, right? He's kind of like this big, angry, adventurous dude uh, that you know. 
is kind of cranky at his parents when they don't give him his way. Right? And they act like and they act like siblings. Yeah, like they're exactly. already at a point where they kind of, they quibble about things. They act like siblings. They, they, their whole I, I mean, again, this plays into the message of the thing. But uh, they're, they're, but but Zeb's whole I uh, uh, quit quit constantly reminding you that that uh, remind reminding me that you saved me thing is is uh, is kind of like siblings squabbling. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, yeah. Like 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 it's the opposite of the tattletale thing where where it's like uh, you know you know quit quit um you, you know you know I uh, quit quit telling my your parents that. You're, that, that you're bothering that I'm bothering you or whatever um, you know you know it's, it's like uh, but but like but like we've got this with siblings too where it's like you know you you uh, you owe me something um, I don't know right, kind of thing exactly. that, that's also kind of a sibling thing too isn't it where like where like you, you you play up something as a way bigger deal than it is where it's like you're, you're you're walking in the street and one car drives by and then you're like hang on get out of the way and then they get out of the way and then the other siblings like I saved your life like <laughs> That's stuff like that now, happened to me when I was Now you hold that against them for the rest of the you hold that exactly, yeah. <laughs> so they, they do have kind of kind of kind of that kind of that sibling thing. Um, I feel like their relationship has the potential to get like really really deep and complex. I agree, and I think it's um, they they kind of foreshadowed that, in, and um, I, I don't I don't know how much you know about um the Wookiees culture and stuff like that. I don't know if you caught on to this or not, but there's this, this is one line that Ezra has where he's taught, he's talking to, um, Zeb and he says, you know, in some places, uh, if you save him, someone's life, they pledge their life to you in unwavering loyalty. And that's the reason why Chewbacca follows Han Solo around yeah. is because the Wookiees have this thing called the Wookiee life debt, where if you save a Wookiee's life, they become your partner and are devoted to protect you for their entire life. I forgot so, about that, yeah. Uh, also, that plays into the whole thing with Zeb, that, that it, this kind of tongue-in-cheek thing where they want to constantly talk about the Wookiees when he's around and, yeah. and compare him <laughs> to the Wookiees because he... he just, just, I think just because he's a big, giant guy and his design was the original Chewbacca design. And so we are constantly comparing that guy to Wookiees. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's a really uh, interesting way to foreshadow uh, that kind of thing without directly coming out and saying it. Um, yeah. They do do a bit of blatant references here and there, like when um, Zeb is in the TIE Fighter and he's like, this isn't the TIE you're looking for, and stuff like that, which I was like, eh, you didn't really have to go there for me, uh, but, you know. That was my um, favorite line. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was kind of funny, too, and it reminded me of... Uh, the, the the scene in uh, New Hope where Han is on the uh, comm in the de in the Death Star uh, prison block yeah. with, with the the officer. He's like Mayday, Mayday. Uh, you know, and here, here's the thing. Uh, let, let's let's talk a bit for for a minute. Let's let's kind of uh, let's kind of pull back a little bit and talk about th uh, uh, the format of the show. Yeah, sure. That is a thing that I thought was hilarious in this context. If they had done that in a movie, it might have bothered me more. You know what I mean? Like, like, and, and we were talking a lot last week about how we can take this show seriously, and we're surprised that we're not looking at it as much as a cartoon show as it is. This time, it was a straight up cartoon show for me, and like, and, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing or anything. Uh, I'm still, in, I, I'm still enjoying it. It's just that I, I think that they're making it more clear th that. They want it to be an animated show for kids, but they're willing to go to those darker places, and so you know they they, they prove that to us here. Uh, I had to be reminded while we were talking even that they did the whole blow up the guy's farm business uh, because I was thinking about because just just the whole let's put our lives on the line for fruit thing seems so cartoony. So when they so when they do things like uh, like 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 uh, like that's not the tie you're looking for and things like that. I don't know. It works more in this cartoon car context for me. It does, and I would. I'm hoping, at the very least, that we that this episode was more cartoony and more kid-like on purpose because it's about the two characters that are the most kid-like in the show, and that that's not indicative of what it's going to keep being all the time. Yeah, right. I well, I mean, I'm not. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Be like this was a very, very well written episode. I had a lot of fun with it. It's just not as dense as some of the other stuff we've seen before. I'm just thinking that. The, the people that show run this show, Wiseman and Kinsberg, are very smart people. Yeah. And and they showed that with the past three episodes that we reviewed last time. There's a lot of stuff to dig in and talk about. I'm just thinking that possibly the reason for this being as 
thinly plotted and not that that's a bad thing no. um, because there's a lot of character stuff going on too going on here that was was fine and I, I really enjoyed um, but you know developing the relationship between Ezra and Zeb here I'm just hoping that because we're focusing on these two characters that's why it feels a little bit more childish and it's indicative of how well the writers know these characters like if you're going to tell a story with these guys you don't want to make it all dark and about you know how the empire is super oppressive and about you know um, the the mysteries of the Jedi and all of that kind of thing like those that's not the kind of story you tell with these characters. Although right? that's all there, isn't it? Right. right? Yeah. It's just that the tone is different because of who we're following. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. This early, it's it would yeah. You're right, and and and, and you're 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 projecting what you know about the producers on the show, which is which is smart um, because. If I were just watching this completely blind, I might not even pick up on the the sh this is a story that is tonally like this because of who we're following, and so the, the and, and so you know you know we're kind of doing a theme show for these for these characters, and if we're in their heads, it's going to feel like this, and so um, everything feels lighter even though we're dealing with... Because we still are dealing with the mystery of the Force and the darkness of the Empire. Both of those things are in there. Right, exactly. It just doesn't even feel like it's really that that, that big of a deal because um, they're making light of some of that. The, the darkness of the Empire... Again, a dude's farm got blown up, but uh, and, and they got and they got and they got they got they got you know you know uh, uh, taken taken away. Um, take him away. You know they got they got they got taken, yeah. they got taken away. Um, but, um, but but like but like uh, even even with the forced thing, um, you know there's there's uh it it, it feels lighter than uh, the the first couple episodes where um every time we we had all this 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 reverence um and majesty you know kind of feel for the force um. I was a little bit bugged by something, and I can't decide if it was in the soundtrack or if it was a spe if it was a sound effect. And they hadn't done this earlier, so I kind of think it might have just been a it's from Ezra's perspective thing, which is why I bring it up here. There is this like I, I'm gonna say Disney again. There is like this Disney magic-y sound effect when he tries to use the Force. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it, but they had the wind chime thing. You know that wind chime sound that you get a lot when you have like Disney magic where there's like the sparkly dust stuff? <laughs> that sound was oh, in there! <laughs> and I was like, you guys are maybe going a little bit too far with that. And and if they keep doing it, that's gonna bug me. Um, <laughs> but I think it was I think it was in the soundtrack and it wasn't a, a sound effect, but it was really hard to tell. They started doing it like you had the normal force sound. But then it just the kind of whoosh, whatever of like like moving a thing, but or trying to move a thing, you know, you know like the like the like the the, the, the deep bass buzz thing that, that right, you have yeah. when you use the force. But then there was like the wind chime thing, and I could not believe I was hearing that. I didn't I didn't notice that. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it again and see if I notice. That's really funny. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was pretty that was pretty hysterical. Um, what other what other things do you want to talk about? Um. My, I just really liked um, the action in this show because uh, th this kind of leads into my best moment because my best moment is seeing a TIE fighter fly in an urban setting and seeing just how impractical they, they really are to fly anywhere yeah. other than in space and in an atmosphere of a planet. Um, I thought they used the, the the design of the Tie Fighters really creatively in the I, action of the show. You know, and I was thinking that first episode. And why don't we go ahead and just jump into best moment, and just talk about that sure. because because yeah. that, that that was mine too. So we're there. Yeah. Um, yeah, him breaking into the Tie Fighter was great. I like. I uh, he's got this like X Men Beast thing going on with his feet. Have you noticed that? Yeah, like yeah, like, like, like he can climb up anything. <laughs> he was steering the when. When he's upside down to to grab Ezra and he's steering the thing with his feet, I thought that was really great. Um, it's awesome. it, it was it just, there's a lot of there's a lot of good spectacle here, and you want that with Star Wars. And uh, I, like like I appreciated getting to see the scale of the Tie Fighter next to other things because you know you always see like it's it's a one man craft. It's like a really tiny cockpit. So you always get the sense that they're really small, and especially when you put, the, put them up against anything, they're really small. But I've never, before this show, I, I don't recall really seeing a lot of TIE Fighters in an urban setting. 
Yeah, he has to like maneuver them sideways and upside down and stuff. That was, was fun. Like, That's cool. Uh, you can tell that people that the people on the show love the Tie Fighter. They they think the Tie Fighter is the cool. And I always thought the Tie Fighter was the coolest design of yeah, anything. Me too. And they think it is too. Now I have a huge problem with the Tie Fighter. I've always had this. I, yeah. I this is a good place to mention. I never get to talk about Star Wars. Now I have a show called Star Wars Discussion. Why? Because I can. And I've decided <laughs> I want to talk about Star Wars more. And so he, and so here, here here's my thing. Have you ever in Anything Star Wars ever seen someone wear a bow tie? No, I haven't. Well, then the name doesn't make any sense. That's true. <laughs> there needs to be one person in Star Wars with a bow tie. If if you know viewers of of someone in Star Wars, sit. I want to see a picture. If there is someone in Star Wars that is wearing a bow tie, let me know because if you live in a universe with bow ties. That's a TIE Fighter. If there are no bow ties, that is a really odd coincidence. <laughs> That's true. I never thought of that. That's really funny. <laughs> they do look like bow ties, though. I will, uh, I, yes, of course. And, and and that's why there must be there must be bow ties in this universe. I have never had a chance to talk about that before, Dan. And I have now <laughs> talked about that. Uh, yeah, the TIE Fighter thing was fantastic. Uh, that, that was so much fun to watch. Uh, did you have a worst moment? Um... It, this wasn't, like, detrimental to the episode or anything, and I'm sure since this is such a serialized kind of show, um, as we had mentioned before, um, this this kind of feeling like a one-off episode, or like a one-shot in, in an ongoing series of, of a comic book where they're going to continue on and develop things in the future. Um, the thing that I thought was the most lacking about the episode was we got to see someone connected to Ezra's past, uh, his, a friend of his parents, and he's they don't really do anything with them. I want, like... There's a lot of talk in the pilot about how Ezra's uh, family isn't around because of the Empire. I want to know what happened to them. Um, and I suppose that's probably a thing down the road that they'll develop with this character and stuff. I'm expecting to get more stuff about it. But I would have liked a little bit more. It left, me, it left me wondering. Maybe it's good that they left me wondering and wanting to watch the show more, I guess. Yeah. Um, but that was the thing that I wondered about a little bit. But you're right. Those people did seem a little bit generic. Then again, they're just farmers on a planet i mean like what you know right yeah how much I, I they're, really they're, si the they're lot, simple I... folk um i was really i was really kind of expecting to see that guy uh, with his wife standing in front of his hut with a pitchfork but uh, <laughs> american god <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah no i can i can totally see why you're saying that um fair enough i mean we we, we need more background about these characters then again i would assume that the reason we're moving as slow paced as we are um and I don't mean slow paced in a bad way, uh, but like you know, we we uh, we've kind of featured every character in the first three episodes for the most part, uh, and then and then here we're we're um we're focusing on on these two specifically and their relationship together. And of course, Ezra is kind of our our window in, as I keep saying, and and he's he's right. he's he's our, he's our main main guy. Um, so I think that that is in in I think you can expect that is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Definitely. My worst um, moment was. Uh, I'm sorry, did you have any, anything else to say no, about no, that? Excuse no, me. Uh, Zeb has no imagination, and, and this might be a joke they're playing up, that this guy needs to develop an imagination, but I, I, th th this was going too far in the, in the silly cartoon route, let's make everybody stupid to make a, to, to, to make a scene work. Um, <laughs> The, the first thing you you thought of to call yourself just because you're dealing with fruit was Commander Melu Run? No. <laughs> <laughs> I really hated that. Because uh, I was just like, you have no idea. Call yourself anything. Call yourself the other guy on the... I, I like 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 on the spaceship. Call yourself anything else, but because what made it really dumb was that then the uh, was that then the soldier on the other side bought it for a minute. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Melo Run seems to be a kind of fruit that everyone's heard of. You know what I mean? That would be like if I got on and I was like, I was like, um, um, I'm a... Uh, I'm Commander Crabapple. Mm. That sounds that sounds made up to me. There, there's a there's a there's a uh, episode of the animated Tick show called uh, the Tick versus Pineapple Pokepo, and the Tick has to uh, uh, be a, a he tries to be a, a covert spy. Uh, the, the government has sent him after Pineapple Pokepo, and uh, uh, who re leads this foreign nation, and uh, he has to make up his his, uh, his code name, and he doesn't think of his code name until one of the bad guys asks him his name, and he says, and he calls himself, he comes up Nick Soap Dish. 
<laughs> and the other guy says, that sounds made up to me. And that's all I could think of when I was watching this. And then, you know, luckily just after that, the guy immediately catches on. Okay, they're probably, they're, they're probably the guys in the stolen TIE fighter. But the thing is, they already know about the stolen TIE fighter, I think. So it, it seems to, I think that they already know it's gotten stolen. And if that's the case, then you should be suspicious at Melu Run right away. Anyway, um, I was also reminded. I also the, the whole time just just Melu Run sounded like a really like like odd complex name for a fruit. Like I, like I, like I, I kept I kept thinking of that. Like all I could think of is the old '60s song. Uh, uh, do run right. Uh, do run run run. Uh, do run right. I just kept thinking that the whole time. I was like <laughs> Melu Run. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that was that was that was really that really, was really silly. silly. I'm with you. I, I think. Uh, this show's kind of making all the Imperials, except for um, the Agents and the Inquisitor, kind of idiots. And that's kind of funny because, like... The movies did that, too. But, like, not on purpose. Yeah. That's a funny thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, you could say it's just being consistent, but yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there were people who looked at this and said the same thing that people said at Return of the Jedi with the Ewoks. It was like... You're beating the Empire with fruit! <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I thought it was really funny that they could absorb energy blasts through their costumes, like, like, like through their uniforms. It's like, oh, if he shoots you with the energy blast, no big deal. You can just stand there and absorb them. By the way, has that ever been a thing? Really? Like, they, can just, they, they have these shield thingies where they can just stand there and, like, absorb energy blasts? Because don't we shoot stormtroopers with energy blasts all the time? Yeah, it's I, I maybe it's like the strength of the of the slingshot. I don't really know. Um, I thought they no, were but, shooting but, them with but, guns and they were taking it. Was it just the slingshot? Uh, I, didn't I thought see they the, had uh, with, blasters. I didn't see blasters. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, all right. I thought it was just the um, the, the stupid energy the slingshot, slingshot that I don't like in this episode. Yeah, <laughs> in this episode. Yeah, but um, in most things, the the armor doesn't stand up against blasters, which is kind of yeah. funny. It makes the armor seem like it's completely useless. Like why are they wearing it all? Yeah, it seems like that would bounce right off. <laughs> now I can totally get that is heavy fruit, and you, this is a thing I never thought I'd talk about. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> let's talk about the fruit and wind resistance on a Tie Fighter. But I, but I, but I, I, I just I can I kind of see. In a Python movie. <laughs> yeah, really. Hey. I can. <laughs> Um, and what is your favorite color? But but I but, but I can kind of see. Okay, you throw this big fruit, and and they, they lose their balance. But I mean, like, they didn't have to throw a lot of them at them. And also, let's remember because we didn't talk about this, and we didn't make fun nearly enough of the, the make funnable stuff in the first episode. Because uh, I mean, like I like it, and I think it's pretty darn good. But there's some stuff because they wear helmets and. Zeb knocks two of them out with one punch. Yeah. Now, I know he's a big guy, but they're wearing helmets. <laughs> like, I, like he would knock are... them over, and I could see that they might be dazed, but not being able to get up. Like, like you knocked the dude out wearing it. You knocked two people out at the same time. That wearing helmets with your fist. So when he throws one piece of fruit at the guy and he just immediately slips like he's on a banana peel and flies off the TIE fighter, I was like, yeah, okay. Apparently stormtroopers are completely useless in this. They shouldn't worry with the costumes. They should just wear, like, Halloween morph suits because they'd be just as useful. Yeah, I, I think stormtroopers are just ill-equipped for everything in Star Wars. It <laughs> seems like they can't do anything. But what's, what's weird is they look badass, right? They like they, they look like they ought to be able to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, people cosplay them. People do not cosplay stormtroopers thinking, oh man, it is so much fun to cosplay a, a completely, like, like, you don't see as many red shirts at conventions as you see stormtroopers. Like, like, um, right. like they're expendable, but I don't think people put on a stormtrooper costume thinking, oh man, I feel so much more ill-equipped to deal with life right now <laughs> than I do when I'm just, like, wearing my street clothes. You know, like, wouldn't you feel empowered wearing that suit? Don't they look intimidating? I've been, a, I've been a stormtrooper for Halloween many times. Have you? I, I, did, I did feel empowered. You feel yeah. empowered. Yeah, but 
and you watch you watch Star Wars and you go like those guys you know you have you you always have we always talk with superhero stuff about the like identity thing of like the clothes make the man you know you you, you put on your 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 superhero mask and you try to you you, you try to make yourself the person you want to be. Those stormtroopers are not allowing themselves to self-identify as stormtroopers. That's. <laughs> I think it depends on what kind of what Star Wars thing you're looking at too. Like, yeah, a lot of the Dark Horse comics portray uh, the Five O First Legion and some of the novels too. The Five O First Legion is kind of like Darth Vader's personal like stormtrooper um, legion that goes around and does Vader's bidding, and they're awesome. like they're made up of like former clone troopers, and they're really good at what they do. Uh, so, like a. A lot of the, the comics and novels that focus on them, they're really efficient and good at what they do. But, like, in the movies and, like, just random stormtroopers a lot of the time, yeah, they're portrayed as completely incompetent. So it depends on what kind of thing you're looking at, I guess, you know? Um, in, in this, it's clearly going to be a running gag. I almost want to add a category while we're talking about this of, like, stupid stormtrooper moment. I think we can probably <laughs> get away with that. I think there probably will be one in nearly that's every so episode. That's so that Yeah, instead of that's so bull like that's so you know what, I'm gonna add it right now. That's so stormtrooper. <laughs> and and this and this time we're gonna we're doing it right now. You're seeing it here first, folks. We're gonna add that in in the quote section. That or just before it, because this isn't always gonna be a quote, but we'll we'll put okay, after the quote section. So that's so stormtrooper. <laughs> and my my that's so stormtrooper this time, Dan, is a stormtrooper uh, standing there and losing his balance, getting hit with a single melon. My that's so stormtrooper moment is there's two they of them. surround a child with a box of fruit on top of their transport and fail to stop him. It's a good point. Right <laughs> now, to be fair, he has the force and he uses it. Yes, he does. Uh, so there's a little bit of that. Um, I like that Ezra is uh, able to use the force this early, but that we didn't talk about this. But but that uh, they're not they're not pushing it too too like 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 too fast. Like I'm I'm kind of buying. I like. Uh, here's the thing I really like. Um, I've been I've been making fun of this a lot, but here's the thing I really like. Um, I like that there seems to be a motif going, and this seems a very original uh, trilogy to me, of. As Ezra's learning how to be a better and more mature person, the Force is coming naturally. Right. Yes. And I like that a lot. Um, you, like, like, like Luke in uh, Empire Strikes Back uh, be, be, becomes, um, you know, you know, better at the Force, uh, or, or rather, actually, is showing that he's that, that uh, he's having a hard time figuring out how to use the Force uh, because of lack of confidence and um, and uh, not having his priorities in the right place and things like that. And uh, mm -hmm. so, so I think that there's there's a that, that, that uh, there's consistency there. Uh, so so like like it depends on what side of the Force you're using. Obviously, um, if if you were uh, if you were going to the dark side, then your your uh, your force powers would be coming from a different emotional place, but obviously, um, you, you know, you know, um, um, emotions uh, have always played a lot into how the force is used, right? Like, like Yoda's not Yoda was never a Vulcan. Yoda never said, "Don't." I mean, he's got plenty years, but he's not a Vul Yoda. Is <laughs> Yoda never said, um, uh, or or Obi Wan um, uh, ever said, uh, "Don't don't feel." It was mind your feelings. Yeah, right, it's understand about your feelings. Um, use yeah. them in the right way. And the force was all about, or the dark side of the force was all about letting go and letting your feelings rule you. And power comes from that. Uh, yes. And the light side of the force was ruling your emotions, and your power comes from uh, comes from you controlling your emotions as opposed to having your emotions control you. Um, I think this show is is already demonstrating in in kind of subtle ways maybe uh, that it gets that. I agree, and I hope that we talked about this a little bit in the first episode when the Inquisitor shows up. There's a sort of a parallel there in the demonstration between um, that sort of thing, and I hope that Kanan is the character that's kind of stuck between those things. Or maybe, like, I hope one of the characters, Ezra, Ezra would probably make the most sense because he's the most inexperienced, um, to be the intermediate and um, um, sort of character that's caught between those two um, philosophies and ways of living, I guess, right? Um, I, I hope that the, that, uh, the Inquisitor, I, and he probably will, because he's a, he's a dark side character, so he'll probably have all of that uh, good Sith stuff going on that I love to see uh, when he eventually shows up. I was That was one of the things that I thought was interesting about this episode, too, is that... Um, 
it's a light episode and we don't really have a main villain show up at all. Like the Imperial agent and the Inquisitor are nowhere to be seen here because it's about those those two characters. It's light as opposed to like in the first three episodes, we saw the agent and the Inquisitor in in some capacity lurking yeah, I, in the I, background. I couldn't remember. Was Callus in three? He was. I couldn't I, remember. Yeah. Yeah. Was he in there somewhere? He was, yeah, because he had the, the, the big fight with... Um, with Zen. Oh, yes, with, of course. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, so he was in all three at the beginning. Yeah. But yeah, we, you're right, we didn't we didn't have him or the Inquisitor in this at all. Um, yeah, it, it was. It, it's more just the looming arm of the Empire, right? Right, exactly. And I, and I thought that was appropriate for the tone they were going going for. And, I, and again, I think that speaks a little bit more to the point that we were talking about earlier, that this is kind of on purpose, uh, uh, you know, that's a little bit lighter and stuff. And... Um, I hope that we see them again soon, though, because I I kind of miss those guys. I, I like those uh, those interesting villain characters as a contrast to our heroes. And, yeah, uh, Th- this is a character stuff. this is a character building episode. I think uh, down the line you're gonna find that we won't be able to have very many episodes with without those guys. Um, right, exactly. Also, I don't think Callus lives forever. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that his power hungry nature, um, trying to climb through the ranks gets the best of him in for the same reasons that the Sith are always brought down like their power hungry nature always brings them down but through different means like this is a guy that isn't trying to um, you know attain power in the sense of like a the way the Jedi and the Sith look at it it's not like power it's political power it's political political power power, exactly influence over other people and in fact um, he, he, he wants to stuff. use people that have that other kind of power in order to get that for himself he's thinking he's exactly. not he's not thinking big um he's not thinking that kind of big you know it's different um i mean he's thinking politically big but um but yeah uh perhaps he also is lacking in imagination dan um, yeah, i think so <laughs> yeah i think so t- i think so too he, well he's just so callous you know i don't know i don't know if you can be that callous and have much of an imagination uh besides yeah, I mean, if, if his uh, imagination uh, allows him to only think of violent uh solutions to problems yeah he definitely doesn't have one <laughs> dan um besides tie fighters are awesome and i don't know if there are bow ties in star wars uh, i i don't have any other uh, cool star wars tidbits did, did you did anything pop up that uh reminded you of anything you want to talk about uh, let's see. Did I have any references in here? Our, in our tidbit section? Um, not the tie you're looking for is obviously a reference to the Obi-Wan line in New Hope. Oh, and I don't know if we did active. quotes. Uh, that was my favorite quote. Did you have another quote that you didn't mention? Uh, my favorite uh, exchange that made me laugh out loud was uh, when Ezra and uh, Zeb finished talking to Kanan and Hera on uh, the comm, and Ezra goes, that went well, and Zeb says, yeah. And Ezra goes, you know where we're supposed to go? And Zeb says, no idea. Yeah, that was and they, funny. And they keep flying. I thought that was really funny and indicative of what the episode was kind of all about and what their relationship is all about. They're, yeah. kind of, they're kind of children that need direction from the rest of the crew at this point, you know? Um, Ezra, in the sense that he needs force training and needs a purpose in his life. And uh, Zeb, in the sense that he's just kind of a blunt instrument. I can, I can relate to Zeb in that scene. He's like me without a GPS. Like, I felt, <laughs> yeah. I felt like I could really, I was really resonating with Zeb there. Anyway, I'm sorry, any other tidbits? Um, not that I wrote down or can think of off the top of my head, no. Okay, well, let's then, let's then finally uh, go to predictions before we do trivia. Uh, this one being kind of a, a, a character-building episode. I don't want to say throwaway, because I, I think it did some things for these characters, um, yeah. but plot-wise, there, there, there wasn't uh, anything major uh, as, as far as our on- ongoing narrative that really immediately made me, like, sparked me about predictions. Uh, like I said, I kind of don't think Callus makes it forever, but I just thought of that talking to you about that character. Uh, did, did this spark anything for you? Um, I really hope that there's some character stuff for Hera and Sabine coming up very soon. I'm sure. Because um, yeah. I thought Hera sending him on this mission that's kind of impossible to make them bond was a really sympathetic and interesting kind of thing. I didn't and think of that. Further, further the uh, uh, kind of perception we had about her in, in the first discussion we had about her being kind of the, the matriarch of this, this ship and this family. Uh, and I really liked that aspect of her. And uh, Sabine continues to be interesting with her uh, art stuff. Uh, but I would like to learn a little bit more about who they are as individuals, other than those two kind of. They're not surface traits. Um, I think they, those two things that we meant that I mentioned um, say more about them 
enough about them that I'm interested in them, but I would like to learn more. You know what I'm saying? I would be very surprised if we didn't pretty early either go go to the Mandalorian world or find more of them. Oh, I hope so. That would, would be fantastic. What do you think? Like, I just kind of think making one of your main characters a Mandalorian, it seems like they would want to do some stuff with them. Something uh, uh, people have been pointing out that I, that I hadn't even thought of is, um, it's kind of fun that we have so many different alien races in our main cast, uh, because, you know, original Star Wars is all humans and a Wookiee, and it's not like he's, you know, there's character stuff for him, he's just kind of there. Um, or yeah. there's not a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of character stuff. In no, but no, not really all that much, unless... <laughs> You know, when he gets separated from Han and Empire, that's kind of the extent of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but like, all the important people are humans, uh, and and I think it's kind of fun. It seems like th- th- this kind of thing it, it was was um you know you know kind of kind of needed to happen. Uh, to, to... Oh yeah, of course. Especially since the Empire is an inherently racist institution. Like, they, they, in yeah, the Expanded Universe, they make a big point. thing about uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn being the only high-ranking. Imp- Imperial officer was an alien in the history of the Empire. Like, they only like using humans. Uh, so it makes sense for the beginning to be a very diverse group of people racially. Which is kind of weird, given the fact that, and, and I'm sure in Expanded Universe stuff, there is probably actually talk about this, but it, j- just in the screen stuff, as far as I can remember, humans aren't even called humans, are they? Do, do, do we ever even no, get a race not. name for humans? Like, like, and, and in fact, aren't they aren't they called by whatever world they're on, but then we don't pretend like they're different species still? It's yeah, kind of interesting. I, mean, I, you know? I don't really... Off the top of my head, I can't remember, like, what... Or if there's a specific categorization for just humans in general. But yeah, like, they, they, they do call Han Solo um, by, you know, the, the planet that he's from and Leia. I just always thought that was a really from. intriguing thing yeah. about Star Wars, that you have all these humans uh, seated all over the galaxy, and we don't really know why, uh, you know, like, mm-hmm. why humans are so prevalent. Um, like, 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 Star Wars seemed to, uh, like, like, seemed to do it because in... Like like uh, like sci-fi serials, uh, most of your main characters are human, and so they, they just made them humans and didn't didn't talk about it. Uh, and leaving right. it ambiguous is really interesting. Um, Star Trek did it because of budgetary concerns. Uh, you know you know Star Trek made everybody either a human or somebody with bumps on their heads because uh, just to kind of distinguish them. Uh, and then uh, be, because. Of um, because of things like this, and because when we got into the movies, we started seeing they had a bigger budget, and we started seeing like you know every now and again you see something that was that, that was kind of you know you know not humanoid. Um, Star Trek felt the need to actually in TNG give us a reason for why all the all these humanoids were all over the galaxy. Star Wars hasn't done that unless it did yeah. it somewhere, and I don't know about it. Yeah, and of course, I haven't read every expanded universe novel in existence because there's just so many of them. So maybe like there's an ex- there's an explanation ambiguous. somewhere, but I like for it. me I like personally, it. I, I I don't know if it, viewers uh, if you guys have any um, any answers to that kind of question. I, I'd love to know. I see. I I like it ambiguous in Star Wars. I kind of don't want to know. I like. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm with you. Um, it gets to the point sometimes where they try to explain some of the things, especially in Star Wars, because like mystery, mystery is a big part of some of the things that that, that make Star Wars interesting to yeah. some degree, especially with like the Sith, um, just because they're like my favorite thing in Star Wars and their culture is really interesting to me. Like, um, there's there's things about the Sith past that um, are completely ambiguous and mysterious that so you don't know about, and that allure is interesting. Like people having to try to figure that out without re- without not really knowing what it is is always really interesting. So um, that that's kind of thing kind of applies to me thinking about the universe, I guess. Dan, let's make the trivia happen, shall we? What was your question from last time, and what is the answer, sir? Uh. My trivia question for last from last time was uh, what race is Darth Maul? And uh, it's interesting because I was looking at the comments a little bit, and uh, see, I didn't I didn't watch all the Darth Maul episodes of Clone Wars because I uh, when I watched that show I didn't really care for it um, as we had discussed a little bit last time, and uh, I was under the impression that he was a Zabrak, but the Clone Wars subsequently said that he was a, a from Dathomir, which is a combination of Zabrak and some other race. So oh. I guess both of those answers are right. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the person I wrote down said Zabrag. I. Uh... 
Well, yeah. I mean, that that's what I originally thought he was based on stuff that they had said in the in, you know, subsequent things about the Phantom Menace cuz oh, you know they don't ever say his race in the Phantom Menace other than like supplemental things. So. so the first person who answered this right was uh Vince Redleader. Uh, we've been hearing a lot from Vince Redleader lately. Uh he seems very good at trivia and he uh actually now that I'm looking at this, I uh, cuz I cuz I have his full answer and he actually said both. Um he seems to really know his Star Wars and he said uh, the answer is Zabrak, but it's been retconned to Dathomir and Zabrak. So he actually gave us both. Okay, yes. Yeah. So I was, wasn't was aware of the fact that they had retconned uh, what, what race he was, but Zabrak was a thing I, w I was looking for. <laughs> that was the race <laughs> you were looking for. Uh, I, yeah. my question from last time was, I'm going to start doing that. Whenever I, say, whenever I say something in Star Wars discussions that I think is kind of a leap and people not, might not believe me, I'm going to be like, this is what I think. <laughs> um, so um, my, my, uh, my question last time was, uh, what is the name of the cube thing? That I uh, we we that that I, I, I Obi Wan Kenobi's voice is in and I remember what his whole hologram thing is in and uh, the answer was a holocron and Vince Red Leader also gave us that first so uh, good job to you you got both of them right um, before anybody else did uh, before we go on to to, to, to more trivia yeah. um, it just occurred to me that with these shows we have been uh, answering audience questions. And I didn't even think to do that this time, Dan. Uh, I just didn't even bring them up. Uh, this is a new show. I didn't think about it. Um, I think what we'll do is um, next time um, I'll do a combination of uh, questions from the first show and from this show, and we'll just answer a few things. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, sorry I about that, folks. Comments, I did not think about um, that. Yeah. I read a lot of comments because I always try to look at what people are saying with the shows and see if I can you know, improve on, uh, upon what we're doing, obviously. Yeah. And... Uh, there were I, I just thought people had a lot of interesting things to say, so I felt the need to bring them up and uh, ring a conversation. But uh, yeah, we should definitely do that kind of thing like we did with The Flash at the beginning of the show. Um, Dan, what is your question for this time, sir? My question is, um, we see the uh, kind of hollow board game that uh, Kanan is playing uh, in The Ghost. I, I think that's the name of the ship. Yep, that is the name of the ship, yeah. It's, a, um, it's a really appropriate name, given that they're the they're, they're like all there is of the rebel the rebellion right now, and uh, they have they're 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 kind of uh, the go they have a, a character uh, uh, in in the 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 uh, old Jedi who is who is kind of uh, like a ghost because uh, he's like a remnant of the of the Republic and all of that. I think it's a, it's a good name. I think so too. I, I'm with you. Um, so that hollow board game that they're playing on the ghost. Um, that's a reference to a scene uh, from New Hope, obviously, where uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 are playing the same game against Chewbacca, and C-3PO says, you know, let the Wookiee win. It's a, it's a, it's a really funny scene in the, in the original movie. Um, I'd like to know the name of the game they're playing. Oh, it's got a name. Yes, it does. Cool. I liked that they still made it look kind of claymation. Yeah, because <laughs> in the movie it very, it does look like that very much so. Well, because it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they went they went really Harryhausen with that. Yeah. I uh, my uh, good question. My my question for this time is always from the episode. Uh, is what is. I think it's supposed to be a code name. I think it's supposed to be like we're on a mission and this is the name that we're throwing back and forth. It could be the name of the TIE Fighter, but I'm almost positive it's the code name. Uh, uh, what is the code name that Zeb uses when he's communicating with the crew uh, I, I, of the Ghost from the TIE Fighter? It might be the name of the TIE Fighter, but I'm almost positive it's not. I think I think it's the code name that he uses. Um, anyway, anyway, what what is that? That's my question. And uh, anyway, everybody, thanks as always for watching. As I said, we will tackle some audience questions next time. I'm sorry I forgot to do that. Um, I, uh, I was preoccupied with... Uh, it, it's ironic. I was preoccupied with I'm afraid I don't have that much to say about this episode. We actually <laughs> went a lot longer than I thought I would, so I shouldn't have said that at the beginning, and, or than I thought we would. And, 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 and then... And, and then it was like it was like I was preoccupied because I thought we wouldn't have enough to say, and then I could have used that to pad the show out, but I didn't even think about it. <laughs> so anyway, we'll we'll do that next time. Uh, thanks for watching. We sure appreciate it. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Dan. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>